Hello there, one and all, and welcome to episode 369 of Love at First Scent with me, Persolais, live on YouTube. We've got a special episode today because it's going to be one of our top 10 rundowns based on a particular note. And if you're watching this video, presumably you know that the note we're going to be looking at is leather. Apologies for the slightly facetious uh, thumbnail. I thought I'd um, dig out from the archives the smell fee that I used um, for the Perfume Society's smell fee campaign about four years ago, maybe I thought I thought that would be an appropriate smell fee. Sorry, I thought that would be an appropriate thumbnail for this particular episode, seeing as the perfume that is in the smell fee features in today's episode as well. Aileen Online Beauty, um, Aileen on Beauty, I should say rather, gets the first comment today, who uh, um, says, "I didn't know there was a live today." Well, as of this morning. I didn't know either. Um, Keith says this is going to be good. I do hope so. Alan is here as well saying, certainly not my favourite note, but I'm confident that you, Persolais, will endeavour to bring light and interest to the subject matter. Your efforts do not go unnoticed. Thank you very much. Uh, light and interest and hopefully a lot of leather. Now, with these top tens, I need to uh, get a move on because I'm actually, number one, it, it, takes, it takes pretty much the full hour to do all ten of them. Number two, I'm cheating a little bit, and I'm going to do a sort of ten plus one because I couldn't I couldn't keep this to um, eleven. Um, Persil is our expert in leather, says Jess. <laughs> you think so? And I leather is if if, if I have a favourite note in perfumery, leather leather would be one of them. And frankincense, incense would be up there as well. Although I don't really particularly have favourite notes, um, and I have resisted doing this video for the longest time. This is probably my most requested top 10. Um, hardly a sort of fortnight passes without somebody contacting me and saying, um, you, you know, how, how come you haven't done a top 10 leather? And I think it's partly because um, I knew it would be difficult to come up with a top 10, but also partly because I didn't want to, I didn't want this video to be a, a, a repeat of the video that I did on my personal top tens, and and it isn't, it it isn't an out and out repeat because, <laughs> I suppose because the frankincense compositions that are in that video aren't in this one, but but it will feel a little bit like a sort of mirror image um, of that video. Lots of comments coming through. Shimon is here as well, saying hello, Tresh. Uh, Kinesia ten will be there, says Rachel. Maybe, maybe. Sharon says thrilled to catch a live. Looking forward to the conversation. Um, I am very much looking forward to the conversation as well. So please keep the comments coming. And I should say, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please do consider doing so. Click on the little bell so that you get notifications of new videos, and feel free to leave a comment, ask a question, regardless of whether you're watching live or you're watching the recording. And for this one, what I would like to find out from you, goes without saying, is what your uh, personal favourite leather perfumes are. This th this is a conversation that, you know, we could, we could probably do 10 videos and have 10 brilliant leather perfumes in each of them and come up with a top 100 leathers. There's an idea, maybe I need to do that with Grant from Base Notes. Um, and, you know, on any other day, I could probably try to do this top 10 again, compile the list again, and have potentially seven different entries on this, I don't know, maybe six or seven different ones. I think there would be three, maybe four, that would always be in the top 10. Um, thumbnail goes crazy, says Bri. Uh, but what what is it about leather? I think, I think I, I don't wear a, a lot of leather particularly. I mean, I, I've, I've got a couple of leather jackets, um, but but it's not, it's, 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 it's not, it's not a material that I am, drawn to particularly more than others. Um, but there is just something I think about the leather perfumes, and obviously they vary as well, so it's difficult to generalize, but it's something about the fact that they somehow combine mm. dryness with a very, very, very urbane kind of civilized, sophisticated sensibility, as well as something that is the very opposite of urbane and civilized, and is actually really, really carnal and and animalic and barnyardy um, and death-like and deathly. All of that seems to be encapsulated so well um, by by leather perfumes, and and clearly they have been in, an inspiration 
um, to perfumers and to brands for decades and decades and decades. It is nearly five minutes since we started. I need to present the first one. And there are going to be so many that as soon as you kind of, you know, as, as, soon, as, as soon as you pop one in the chat, I'll be thinking, oh, God, why on earth didn't I include that one? Uh, somebody's just said Patchouli24 from La Labo. Yeah, I consider that one. That's not on here today. I really, really, really didn't want to overthink this because I, I could have I could have overthunk it for days and days and days. We need to start. And I think we will start with one that is one of the oldest ones on the list, but isn't actually the oldest one. Um, and that's depending on whether we say um, we, we take its original date as, as the date of its creation. So this originally appeared in 1927, but then we got one variant of, in it as, of it as an EDT in 2007, and then we got an EDP in 2016. You know where I'm going with this. It is Chanel's Cuir de Roussy, originally composed by Ernest Beau, um, and, and I, had, I had to get the extra out because... Um, I, I really, really do like all versions of it. Oh, is this one leaking? That is not allowed. I really do like all versions of it. Um, the EDP is perhaps my least favourite of it, but, you know, if we only had the EDP, I would still wear it and, and adore it. But the extra is something else, and it feels very, very, very wrong indeed to be popping it just on a blotter but I can't start with putting something on skin because I will just get so distracted. There is the beautiful extra bottle. This this isn't vintage particularly. This is, I don't know, maybe just about four years old or so, I think. Um, let's pop that on there and make a start. I am going to be swooning so much. Here we go. First off, first up on our list of the top 10 leathers, this is, like I said, a 10 plus one. <sighs> And I haven't, I haven't smelt this for a while, and I don't know why I haven't smelt it for a while. <sighs> so, why this one? Um, the extra has a stronger mock birch tar note, says Herb. Yes, I think you're right, but why this one? This one, because it is in some ways in many ways, the quintessential suave, sophisticated leather. Um, so it's got that birch tar note. Um, maybe it's got some castorium in there as well. So it's, it's, got, it, it's got that tannery animal. I'm, I'm going to need lots and lots of, of synonyms today, also because I'm going to be saying tannery animalic a lot. Th this, one, this one starts tending towards suede. But, um, oh, Milad Sky says, good evening from Muscat. Very, very good evening to you, sir. Um, but what makes this one beautiful is that in the heart, Ernest Beau and Jacques Polge and Olivier Polge after, after him as well, I suppose, really didn't hold back on soft florals. And like so many other of the perfumes in the exclusive range, this has got a marked but never ever overdone iris note. So it's recognizably iris, powdery, dry, earthy, slightly root-like, but it never takes over and it, it and it never tips it over into being a, a, an iris perfume. But that just seems to tone down the animalic slightly. So this is this is this is this is a very sort of I don't know, Belle Epoque or fin de siècle type um leather when when clothes were still and clothes were still really, really richly layered, and there were lots of buttons, and there were lots of cuffs, and then you know there were lots of things to take off before you got to the to the skin beneath them all. Um, it's it's a kind of it's a kind of costume drama leather, a period drama leather, um, and it and it does have it does have I suppose a kind of retro, slightly dated quality to it, but I think that just makes it all the stronger. Um, and nothing is overdone. The birch tar has a maybe slightly kind of oily quality to it, which lends a sort of golden hue. Um, it, it, it's just, just, just heavenly. Time to Musk Up says, I have EDT and EDP, almost bought a partial of the Parfum, but didn't want someone's dead skin cells in my bottle. I know what you mean, but you know, if there was, if you don't have the extra in your collection, and if there is one perfume 
that I would say it's worth saving up for and foregoing the pleasures of some other perfumes. It's it it's it's this it's this. Do start sharing some of your recommendations because I want to read them out. Uh, Jonathan says, I prefer the note of leather as a subsidiary rather than the principal, especially if that principal is oud. Amouage interlude man. <laughs> Thank you very much. Aqua di Parma oud, Gucci intense oud are all great representations. Um, uh, well, I, cer I certainly agree with uh, one of those. Um, yeah, perhaps we'll <laughs> better leave it there. Uh, Jess says, I absolutely love Violette Valinka. That was from Hermes. Again, I'm fond of that one as well, but that's 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 not on here today. Um, and more one three fiend says, I literally wondered yesterday if you have a top 10 leather video. And here we are. Yeah, you and lots and lots of other people. Dimitri says, Cure de Russi is just a yellow flower bomb to me. Nothing related to leather there comes across similar to Samsara. Oh my goodness. That... <laughs> Well, okay, go figure. Fascinating. Right, uh, carrying on then. What have we got next? Next, we're going to come flying straight to the 21st century, which for, for the one which is in my thumbnail. Another huge, huge, huge personal favourite from 2006, composed by Andy Tower for his own brand, Tower Perfumes. It is, of course, the third perfume that he made, Lone Star Memories, 03. And I wish I had it in a kind of original vintage bottle, not because the, the juice has changed. I'm sure the juice is the same. Um, uh, Daniel says, you better have Queer Beluga on the list, Persilaise. <laughs> so please, please don't shoot the messenger. Maybe we need to do a kind of top 10 and then an 11 to 20, something like this. No, because Queer Beluga, yeah, I love that too. I love that too, but it's not there. Um, this was in your top 10 for life, right? Says Brad. Yes, this 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 is this is one of my absolute all time favorites. Let's have a sniff. And I'm looking at the selection here and I wonder if it would be possible. So if this is the kind of the, the, the buttoned up, ultra, ultra chic, sophisticated period drama um, leather, I think this is the kind of romantic one. Is there one on the list that's more romantic? There probably isn't actually. So let's say, let's say this is the 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 the, romant the sprayer mechanism has gone a bit dodgy, but luckily I have a, a backup bottle. This is the kind of romantic, heartfelt leather, and so he was he was Andy was just guided by the perfume gods when he made this. Um, it's also one of my favourite examples of a kind of narrative perfume, by which I mean that if ever I'm um, asked to give a talk uh, or a presentation on this business of what we mean when we say that a perfume tells a story. This is one of the ones that I quite often take because its development is quite classical in the, in the sense that it really has very, very marked top section, middle section, base section. It, it tells a genuinely followable and cohesive and progressive story. And the story here um, is it, kind of a story about a certain type of masculinity. It's it, it, it's a cowboy, you know, who's been out working the, what is it the cowboys were? It's not fields, is it? What is it? The, the plains or, I don't know, I don't know, whatever it is the cowboys do. And he's been out there riding his horse and he's been wearing his leather jacket or leather trousers or I don't, I don't actually know very much about cowboys. So just go with me on this one. Um, and then at the end of the day, on a ranch, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Um, at the end of the day, after he's roasted himself some, or made himself, brewed himself some freshly, some fresh coffee with some freshly roasted beans, he then goes off and washes uh, all of the day's grime off with some beautifully, beautifully, and rather unexpectedly scented geranium soap. And, and again, you know, like we had the with the Chanel, the clever thing in the Chanel is the juxtaposition of the florals with the leather. It's very, very similar kind of effect in Lone Star Memories. Um, lots and lots of birch tar again, beautiful vanillic ambery base. But in all of that, this this really, really quite unashamed and no holds barred geranium 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 note pops up, which is slightly green, slightly rosy, um, maybe a little bit pink. It 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 just works. It just works, and it and, and it and it creates, um, as I say, a rather romantic image of this. Um, this cowboy. Um, 
Yeah, it's, it's, I, again, I don't wear it often enough. And I'm just so, you know, when you really, really love something and you just cannot entertain the possibility that maybe other people won't, this is, this is so Marmite, this scent, in the, in the sense that people have a very, very strong reaction to it and either they love it or they, they really, really don't. And I still don't kind of understand why it is that they don't. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> Tracy says, the new Almodovar movie is all about cowboys. Yes, apparently it's a sort of queer Western, they're calling it. Good cast. I will mail my lone star to go and see it. I don't think it's going to be out in the UK just yet. Um, they work the cows, says more one three Fiend. My top three, says Filippo, is Cuy de Russi, Bellamy and Tuscan Leather. Bellamy is another one I really wanted to include here, but, but, <clears throat> but we've got another Hermes. Corpus Equus from Naomi Goodser is my jam, says Golden Frau. Love that one as well. And Teus has got to be here, says Time to Musk Up. Let's see. Um, Gavin says, to be honest, it's the smell of a day spent tarmacking, which means it's a brilliant smell, right? Yeah, and, and it, it does have, it does have that feel to it. Cuir de Lancôme for when I want a soft leather. Too bad it's been discontinued, says Sharon. And you know, actually, Sharon, I looked up whether it's been discontinued or not, because I, I want to try and make the perfumes that I present in these lists, ones which are currently available or available at the time of the list going out. I adore that Cuir de Lancôme. I've got a backup bottle of that as well. That one, of course, was made by Kelly Specker. And if we, if I could include a a discontinued scent, it it would be, you know, that 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 would be the one because it, it, that that's again just heavenly, heavenly, and I don't understand why it's been discontinued. Okay, we're going to go uh, four years closer to the present with another kind of controversial one, but I, I suppose a lot of people will not be surprised to see it here. So this is from 2010, composed by uh, François Damachy. Uh, there we go. I think probably a lot of you knew this was going to be here. This is Leather Rude, and I suppose I have to say, I learned this from you. I learned from you that the fact that it's got this logo on it, as opposed to the joined up CD, means that it's an older bottle, which means that it's a, I suppose what we could call a vintage uh, Leather Rude. Um, so I would say if you can find the original, go for the original, although I think that the current is still pretty okay. Before 2018, says Time to Musk Up. I again love this. This is this is one of I think three bottles that I have. Madame Perselais really loves it on me. As you can see, this is quite a large bottle. Probably will never need another one as long as I live. And this was um, one of the originals um, in the Collection Privé when when um, when they when when Dior did their exclusive thing. Not counting the three that they did during Hedy Slimane's time. Um, this was one of the originals, and I remember I first smelt it at the Bon Marché uh, in the run-up to Christmas <coughs> 2010, and Madame Perselet saw my reaction and said, would, I think you would like that for Christmas, wouldn't you? And I just said, yes, please. And I still have the bottle that uh, I got for her for Christmas, and I'm pretty sure that was one of the ones that I got Francois Demachy to sign the packaging of. I think I've got his signature on it. Anyway... I'd say, the Bryce says, I'd say that and the tower are in the same kind of family, very birchy leather. Um, this is discontinued, unfortunately, says MP. Yes, well, it depends on who you ask. I think you can still get it in a lot of Dior boutiques. And last time I checked, you could get it at Harrods. But it's a weird, Dior are being very, very weird with some of these scents, because if you ask them outright, apparently, is it discontinued, they say, well, kind of. But if you go into a shop and say, sell me a bottle of leather oud, and some other ones, then suddenly they appear. I, I don't understand, but but I think you can get it. Um, anyway, now this what I what I love about this one that there is a, there is a the, the oud note in it is you know I, I wouldn't be surprised actually if it's if it's entirely synthetic. Uh, it works. It's it's got that um, barnyardy feel to it, that animalic feel, not overly medicinal. Um, but what really, really makes this perfume, I think, is the combination between the, the cypriol, the papyrus, and what I get as a, a, um, an atlas cedar note. What I adore about um, atlas cedar, if you ever get to smell it in isolation, please do, is that it's got a kind of tangy quality, as though as though somebody has taken the cedar wood or the cedar wood chips and, and squeezed like a kind of burnt singed lime juice or a burnt lemon juice over them 
so that you almost you almost get a sort of citrus quality to it. Um, it it's it's a smell that um, I get a lot from Tom Ford's Bois Marocain, and it creates a, a leather um, which feels. Let me see if I can go for an image for you for this one. So we have the romantic one, we have the buttoned up. This feels like a sort of, a, a, I don't know why, but like a sort of high altitude leather. I always think of mountains in the desert and, and, and it, you know, I don't know Morocco very well. I've only been to uh, Marrakesh and Fez and Tangier and, you know, I, I don't consider myself to be an expert on the place. Plus, plus a really, really beautiful day trip once from Marrakesh into the mountains to places like um, Ouazazat. Um, but it makes me think of that kind of very bleak quality that some of those landscapes have. It, 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 is, it is, yeah, there is a bleakness to it, I think. Um, and and the, the bleakness is the beauty. The bleakness is what gives it a really, really haunting, ethereal, silent quality. And at the same time, there's also something really quite deadly and dangerous about it, because of course, these are, these are quite lethal, um, territories, um, and and you know they they look beautiful when you see them and you're passing through them. But but if you were stuck in them and with, with no with no help, then you'd be in a mess. Um, Alan says that your representative at Harrods recently advised me that Leatherwood continues to be available at your boutiques, um, albeit not in all sizes, such as the forty mil for which I'm hunting. There you go. Thank you very much for that, Alan. MB says, since I'm new to leather, my personal favourites are when it's mixed with Iris. Iris Nazarena, Chanel La Pausa, I have the EDT and the EDP and Citizen Queen. Thank you. Um, Alex K80 says, always Abbey Rouge, EDT and Anteus, and I know one is an Oriental, the other one is a Chypre, but both have a distinct leather note and are affordable. Greetings from the Palatinate Forest in Germany. Yeah, I did wonder about Abbey Rouge, but, and as you know, that's probably my favourite scent of all time. Um, I don't go to it for leather. Um, I go to it for that kind of ambery sweet quality, I suppose. Um, time to musk up says it's dry and the animalics are very sour for 30 minutes, but the honey dry down is heavenly. Are we, are we still talking about leather root then? And Nico says Francesca Bianchi's leather note is one of my favorites. Um, she, is, she is very, very good at handling leather notes. <laughs> Pradeep, leather oud has a urinal touch. Um, well, as long as you wash your hands after you've touched the urinal, you're all good. Um, right, moving on then. Number four, number four, number four. Number four is the oldest one on the list. Number four, although I don't have an original bottle, if only. Number four is the one and only Kinesia 10 from Kinesia from 1925, composed by, I mean, for goodness sake, composed by Francois Coty and Vincent Roubert. Again, another one that I never, ever, ever want to be without, and I hope they don't mess with it too much. I just love how unassuming, how unostentatious the presentation is, um, and it's it's just it's just genius. Um, and this is this is the kind of template for so many leathers that have come afterwards or since, including one that we are going to um, have on the list. Because um, the, the one kind of way of constructing leather perfumes is to take uh, a, a kind of very, very, very sort of dry, almost sour castorium note, synthetic or, or natural, I don't know, and at the top of it, put very, very skillfully, of course, so that you don't quite see the seams, but put a, a kind of tart, um, cheap fruit note. So <clears throat> some sort of a tart strawberry or maybe a tart raspberry. And it just works because it gives the opening a certain brightness and a lightness, but that tart quality links up very well with the tart quality of the leather. And somehow the two together um, spell sophistication, even though the, the one is kind of bright and neon-like and a little bit trashy and vulgar, but you don't get any of that. It's the contrast that does it. Um, Pradeep says, Kinesia, current Kinesia 10 is butchered, smells like cement isobutyl quinoline. 
don't say that. I need I need to resmell it then. I need to resmell it and I need to treasure this um this bottle. Kanisha 10 was too harsh for me, says time to musk up. Golden edition worked better for me. Interesting. Um it's and this is it's it's coming across it's coming across like a, a almost more animalic than I remember it, like a kind of civet note is coming through. It's it's perhaps simpler than the three we've had so far, less baroque, more streamlined. So maybe this is maybe this is the kind of business-like leather. Maybe this is the leather that you could wear out and about without being too worried about frightening people, but you still want to have that bit of edge. You still want people to take you seriously. Um, so it's a leather for when you're wearing anything but leather, if that makes any sense at all. Um, it's it's very kind of daytime, modern. Um, I'm picturing I'm picturing you know like execs in sharp suits, um, like some sort of an Armani suit maybe. Uh, Pradeep uh, says queer moresque is still fine. Anyway, shouldn't go on to that. Um, and maybe it's the inclusion of that tart fruit note at the top that makes it feel more daytime palatable, slightly more accessible. Um, and yet, as I say, there is definite, there is definite, definite, definite edge here. Um, let's label that blotter and I need to get a move on. Um, I wonder if we'll see Mr. Tom Ford make an appearance on this list. I hope so, says Otis Film. Um, Rachel says, I need to resell this gem. You've actually written resell, and I thought, why do you want to resell it? But I know what you mean. Um, Pradeep says, did you like the golden edition? I don't think I've smelt it. I don't think I've smelt very much else from Kinesia, actually. Right, let's make sure we do the fifth one before we get to the half hour mark. Uh, this is from 2014. Gosh, which means it's nearly 10 years old. Goodness me. And this is, um, now, Hermès, I could have included quite a few. Um, of course, Hermès as a brand, know a, a thing or two about leather. Um, and I am Denard. I don't think um, Violette Falenka has been around long enough for me to to kind of consider it as one of the greats, but, th but there are some really, really wonderful leathers in the range. And I went for, Pradeep, thank you very much. I went for Cuir d'Ange, from 2014, from the Hermessence, composed by Jean-Claude Elena. And it's one of the ones where all I've got is this, and yet it is one of my favorite perfumes. And because all I've got is this, I'm very, very mean when it comes to wearing it and spraying it. And it's one of the ones, you know, on my list of must save up for, because those Hermessence are just so, so, so ridiculously expensive. Um, and it, it's it's kind of what happens, because how much do you get in these? Is it 50? Yeah, it's 15 mils, and I've used a few there already. And, you know, when I wear a perfume, I probably like, Spray about eight mils in one go. So I am exaggerating slightly. Um, and so this has got to be, this has got to be the next Hermessence that I um, treat myself to, because it is just, it's just fantastic. And it's it's also, it was such a surprise when it came out, because in so many ways, it's so not Jean-Claude Elena. Um, it, was, it was almost like him saying, look, guys, I can do this kind of stuff too. Um, Time to mask up says cardboard leather. It's so good though. Yes, I know what you mean. It's got a, it's got a paper like quality. Tina says I was on the brink of buying it today. <laughs> I don't even want to know how much it costs now. You see, this is the thing. If I'd bought it like five years ago, I would have had a bottle now. Whereas now I expect the full size bottle probably. I, I don't actually even want to know. Iliac says, hi, Le Chat, hi, Monsieur Percelais. A leather I love is Zing. I love Zing as well, but it's I think it's officially discontinued. Got maybe 10 mils left from a vintage bottle that I dread to finish. Uh, a case, a sad case of discontinuation. Um, thanks for this live. Spaced Out says, it makes me feel important and aloof. Uh, Cuir d'Ange has a starchy quality like fresh peanuts or potatoes from the ground. You are 100% correct. So this is the, this is the earthy leather. I think maybe that comes from again from an iris note. Maybe what Jean Claude Elena here decided to do was up the kind of earthy, rooty quality of the iris. Um, so this is the, the the this would be like a leather if it if it grew on trees, or or as somebody else said, if if it were like a creature that was made partly of leather and partly of soil and partly of paper. Um, it is heavenly. There is something really, really celestial about it. And what's amazing 
And I remember the image that came to my mind was, you know, you think of this sort of beautiful angel figure, like a sort of perfect, perfect archangel, but it's, but it's wings um, are made of the thinnest, finest sort of gossamer-like leather. Um, I won't get into my story about the book Skellig and its relationship to um, Queer d'Ange, but somewhere on YouTube, the Skellig story is out there. Uh, Rich says, I'm eating a cottage pie. <laughs> you enjoy it. Bon appetit. Um, and this, this is this is just beautiful. Every single part of it is just so beautifully judged. And it is like if angels were made of leather, they would smell like this. Um, do you have any feminine leaning leather perfume recommendations? Says treat yourself. Um, I think I think all of these could be worn by women. You know, absolutely, Cuir de Russie can be worn by women. Certainly, Cuir d'Ange can be worn by women. Um, from the ones that I've got coming up, easily two of them could be worn by women. So I think it's just, you know, leather Leather is leather, okay? You, you, when you're doing leather, you need to kind of go for it. And I um, I do love more subtle leathers as well, but subtle is not what you're going to get, I think, from my top 10 leathers. Pradeep says, Kelly Kalesh, Gallo, oh, Gallo, Gallo d'Hermes, again. Uh, Violet Velenka, Bellamy, lots of Hermes leathers. Rachel says, femme leather is Hermes Violet Valinka. Yes, I suppose that does kind of lean more feminine. Ombre leather is a great feminine leather, says Jonathan. I presume you mean the Tom Ford. Aqua de Parma leather is heavenly, says Andre. Every fragrance depends on your comfort zone, says Spaced Out, no matter if it's feminine or masculine. Couldn't agree more. So, just gone the half hour mark, I should say that you are watching uh, episode 369 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, and we're doing a top 10, my top 10 favorite leather perfumes or what I consider to be the top 10 best leather perfumes. Please, please, please do subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. And I would say at this point, if you are enjoying the video, let's see the thumbs up goes up because because I can see I can see only about 30% of the people watching have actually liked the video, which is a little bit alarming, but we need to move on. So um, where did we get to? So we've done the Hermes. Let's go. Let's go to again another one, which is a favorite of mine from 1981. And this one again means that we name check Monsieur François Damachy because he is partially credited with this one, although the main credit goes to Jacques Polge. And it's another Chanel. It's the only one where I've allowed myself to have two from one brand. Is that is that really, really naughty? Because it is, of course, again, one of my absolute favorites of all time. The incredible Antaeus, as I say, from 1981 with the dodgy cap because I lost the original cap and I'm using the cap from, from the, um, the aftershave lotion or the body lotion. Antaeus, um, Ant I mean, Antaeus, you know, is is the godlike one. And it's it's so well named. It's such a brilliantly, brilliantly named perfume. Although at the moment, I can't remember. Antaeus is the son of two gods, isn't he? I think somebody can look it up and tell me. Um, and this is, this is just, you know, this is, this is a scent that has descended to us, to us mere mortals from the height of Mount Olympus and we are not worthy. And yet we feel so blessed and so glad that we have it amongst ourselves. Ah. Oh. It's, yeah, it, I, I tend to go really, really speechless, don't I? What I also really, really love about Antaeus is that it feels so 80s now. There is something really, really big and butch about its diffusiveness. You can so tell that it came at the same time as things like, you know, YSL Kouros and maybe even YSL Jazz, we could say, and, and Cacherel Pour Homme, and those really, really, really big chest-pumping masculines. Um, but I think what makes my uh, what makes Antaeus my favourite of, of the lot is that it knows when to soften. It knows where to tone down that butch quality with something that is actually really, really quite gentle and tender. And to me, that's always come from the beeswax note in the bass. That adds a kind of luminous, golden, 
delicate quality. It, 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 it's a very strange word to use in relation to Antaeus because, because the other facets of it are so not delicate. You know, there's a heavy, heavy, heavy dose of isobutyl quinoline here, which is one, another one of those classic leather materials, which is kind of bitter and tooth-bearing and snarly and full of claws and sharp and aggressive, I suppose, and also can be quite green. And yet, the base is so beautifully balsamic, um, not too sweet, but sweet enough. And it's just, it's just, you know, this particular Antaeus, and nobody's looked up what who Antaeus was, by the way. Who who was he the son of? Somebody needs to find out for me, please. Um, I cherish my Antaeus bottle from the 80s. So this is an Antaeus who I think is has got a very, very definitely a kind of poetic sensibility to him, but he's also got some stubble, okay? It's, it's, a very stubbly kind of scent. And that's a fabulous analysis, says Rachel. Why, thank you very much. <laughs> we do our best. We do our best. I suppose it's because I know the scent so well as well. Um, again, another one that I must never, ever, ever be without. This room is going to smell so amazing when I've, when I've, when I've sort of finished. And I always love seeing what the smell of the room is going to be after I've left this room. And then I come back to like clear away the bottles and put all the equipment away. Today, it's, it's going to smell absolutely extraordinary. So we've done Antaeus, which means that was our sixth one. And I'm going to permit myself now to present the plus one, because it's kind of relevant to Antaeus. So this one is not officially in the top 10, although I almost want to weep to say so, because I love wearing it so much. This is from 2014, and by Fabrice Pellegrin. Uh, oh, hang on. M says, Wikipedia says that from Greek sources, he was the half-giant son of of Poseidon and Gaia. There you go. <clears throat> so he was probably quite a dude. Um, anyway, 2014, Fabrice Pellegrin from Salvatore Ferragamo, Testa di Moro. And a lot of you know how much I adore this. And I'm talking about it now. Oh, Antaeus defeated Hercules. I did not know that. I'm talking about that at this point, because to me, this is very much like a sort of modern day update of Antaeus. And if I ever have the opportunity to meet um, Fabrice Pellegrin again, and I hope I do, I would really, really, really like to ask him if this was a kind of, a, a, a sort of touch point for him, or a, a marker, or an inspiration, in the same way that I'd like to ask him if Dune was an inspiration for his new O Nabati for Diptyque. <laughs> uh, Eric says, Harrods had it on clearance. What? The Testa di Mora? Oh no, does that mean it's going or something? It is it, 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 is, it is very much like Antaeus, but I suppose what makes it more modern is that some of the rougher edges have been smoothened out. Um, it, it isn't quite so aggressive. It isn't quite so chest pumping. Um, and maybe the contrasts in it aren't quite so, so marked and so bold. So in Antaeus, you've got a really, really strong contrast between the leather heart and the softer base. Here, everything, I guess, is blended together a little bit more. It's more luminous, it's more translucent, it's lighter. And Alan says, half giant, isn't that like being the world's tallest dwarf? I don't know, why don't you ask Antaeus yourself, if you dare? He defeated Hercules, okay? Um, but we won't, um, we won't uh, talk about this one too much, because as I say, this isn't officially in the top 10. This is kind of like the plus one. I included it. I don't even know if it would be number 11, but I included it because of the more, of the most recent leathers that I've added to my collection, this is the one that I really, really enjoy wearing. And together with um, Cuir d'Ange, it is the most recent composition um, on the list. So, uh, Half Giant is a race, not a size, says Jake Fragrance. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's move on. So, have we only got, have we only got like Three to go. Oh my goodness, is that right? Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, what's happened here? Have I miscounted something? Well, how many have I got in front of me? No, I've got four in front of me. Okay, never mind. Um, so next up on the list, one, again, another one that I don't believe I have a full bottle of, another one to add to my must save up list. Uh, somebody said, would there be a Tom Ford? Yes, there is a Tom Ford. And it has to be the, the classic um, Tuscan leather. I've just got this rather fetching mini, uh, which I will be able to dip a blotter into. This is from 2007, composed by Harry Fremont and uh, Jacques Cavalier. Um, in a way, this is kind of 
the, the quintessential Tom Ford scent. I suppose one reason why I haven't yet saved up for a full bottle for myself is because it's a favourite of a member of my family. And that always becomes a little bit awkward if you associate uh, a perfume with somebody that really, really strongly, um, then I think, I, my personally, I think you sort of find it a little bit difficult to wear yourself. But you know how um, I was talking to you earlier about the Kinesia 10 sort of setting the template? Tuscan leather is very, very, very much um, a, a, a sort of descendant of, of the Kinesia 10 leather st uh, style of leathers. Um, yeah, because here you can detect that that, that leather heart is offset and made luminous and brighter with some kind of slightly trashy, vulgar, fruity note at the top. And again, it could be raspberry, it could be strawberry. But this this works really well. And it's kind of, you know, maybe a bit of a cliche to say that this actually does make me think of Italy. And I'm sure the association of the name has something to do there. But it also makes me think of the particular sophistication and style of the people in Italy. You know, Italian chic is very, very different from French chic. Now, what's that word? Is it sprezzatura? Somebody will correct me. Is it that word for when they do the chic thing without making it look at all as though they're they're trying? Um, Italians do that really, really well. French chic, I adore too, and and um, it's it's completely different. But particularly Italian men just seem to manage to pull off you know, that kind of, I don't want to say Godfather style, but you know what I mean? I'm, I'm talking about the movie here, um, and they were all Armani suits. But Sprezzatura, thank you very much, Rachel. They they just put, they seem to pull it off so, so effortlessly. Um, oh, Shimon says Sprezzatura, but it also means a little worn in. Yeah, maybe, and, and that's kind of chic too. And, and this is like, you know, really, really well worn in leather boots, or maybe really well worn in leather jacket. It's got that kind of lived in quality. Um, and and I, 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 just, I just love it as a, let me compare it with Kinesia 10. Where's my Kinesia blotter? Okay, so the Kinesia 10, or at least this bottle that I have of the Kinesia 10, is drier, more sour, tangier, and I guess that's what makes it an older scent. But for the 21st century, I suppose the folks at Tom Ford decided they needed to add a bit more sweetness. And it could be that there's a kind of, smoky vanilla note in there and maybe this is smokier actually than um than the kinesia but yes actually maybe i'm just going to ignore the fact that this member of my family wears it and i'm going to save up and try to get try to get a bottle for myself because i don't understand why i don't have tuscan leather in my collection apart from this tiny little mini i think i think we need to redress this although probably tuscan leather now costs about what i don't know 400 pounds or something because tom ford prices have gone absolutely ridiculous too Okay, I think we are doing okay for time, and now we do have three left. So the next ones coming your way are pretty big. Um, this one, I don't know officially when it came out because I haven't been able to find out, and I don't really know who the perfumer is because this is a brand that is kind of very, very oddly cagey about who the perfumers are. They say that the perfumer is the person that the brand is named after, but there's also quite a few people who say that this person doesn't even exist, so I, I don't know. Anyway, the perfume is... Um, Oud Cuir d'Arabie from Montal. I've had this bottle now for, I think probably for about 13, 14 years. And again, regular viewers will know that I got this from their boutique in Paris. I have no idea if the boutique still exists. And in those days, if you were buying one of their scents from the Paris boutique, you could ask for them to add more of the concentrate and make it stronger, make it more concentrated. Um, and I asked them to make this concentrated and they looked at me like I had gone insane. Um, but I said, yes, please, I would like this to be more concentrated. And I have treasured this bottle ever since. Montal is an odd brand. They release lots and lots of things. Many of them are very, very, very forget forgettable and strange and yeah, it, 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 it's, it's a weird brand to get your head around. Um, but, oh, the boutique is still there, yes, says MP. I seem to remember that it was either close to or on the Place Vendôme, so maybe it's still there. But Oud Cuir d'Arabie is genius. Some of the older ones are great as well. I remember there was one which was very much like Portrait of, Portrait of a Lady, but and I think it actually came out before Portrait of a Lady. Um, 
Tina says, didn't expect this. I think I have a sample. Ah, there you go. No, I love this. I love this. And this is the, this is very much in the family of Lone Star Memories. So you know how I said the Tower Lone Star Memories presents smoke and fire um, and woods and coffee and then kind of washes it all away with a beautiful floral note. This does all of that. Um, but at the top, of course, it makes the leather oudier. So you've got something that, that is dirtier, filthier, more animalic, more barnyard-like. And then that takes us away from the ranches of Texas and brings us into the territory of Arabian deserts. And, you know, you can you can think of, you know, that now suddenly we've got Bedouins doing whatever it is that Bedouins do with, oh, Sharon, that's very, very kind. Thank you very much. Love a top 10 video. Thank you. I love a super chat. Thank you very much. That's really, really kind. Thank you. And I love sharing these top 10 videos with you. Um, I know Fragcom disagrees, says Paroli, but I find ombre leather EDP to be a very good substitute for Tuscan leather for a third of the price. I really like ombre leather, and I really like the ombre leather parfum that they did. I'm, no, I, are we not meant to like that one? Well, if you enjoy it and I enjoy it, we shall just carry on wearing it. Um, I'm curious whether Tom of Finland will be in this list, says TK. I really, really, really wanted to include Tom of Finland, and in the end, I thought that, I mean, I, I could I could have, I should have, I loved a Tom of Finland, and I wonder what it was that's, well, I don't know, I, I could have, and I love the, the saffroline, the, the, the handling of the saffroline in there, because it's kind of saffron leather, that one. Anyway, so the Montal is um, Arabian uh, leather with the sun just beating, beating, beating so heavily and so strongly on the desert, and yet everybody still goes about doing their thing. And if the Tom Ford is horses and cows, this is this is goats, okay? <laughs> and somehow that smell, that that really, really barnyardy smell of goats, it's, it's I, I really, really love it. Absolutely love it. And I love its dry down because the dry down is so gently floral, quite unexpectedly gently floral. For number nine, we go back to the past. We go to the 40s to, in a way, you know, another kind of important leather template, although I wish this were a vintage bottle. And it is, of course, the majestic Bondi from Piguet, composed by Germain Cellier. I'm sure this bottle I have here may have the fingerprints of Aurelien Guichard over it because they, they've had to they've had to change these and amend these as they've gone along. Um, but this is very much um, this is very much the kind of leather that we need to thank um, if we're fans now of things like Anteus and Testa di Moro. This is a strong, strong, strong isobutyl quinoline leather, and ooh, but and it's green, and it's it's angry. I mean, this is probably the angriest scent. And it's just so brilliantly named, you know, like Bandit. It's 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 somebody who, because 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 Bandit carries certain connotations uh, about it as well. You know, it's almost like somebody who's turned to crime because they're so frustrated with society and angry with society. And um, it's yeah. So this is this is rightly or wrongly the the smell of. Well, let's let's be kind to it, and let's say it's a kind of righteous anger. Let's say it's turning to being abandoned because you want to right society's wrongs. It's it's the Robin Hood. It's the Robin Hood leather. Has Tom of Finland been mentioned yet? Says Algebraist. We talked about it just a few minutes ago in the context of saying that it's not on the list. I'm so sorry. Um, I love Isobutyl Quinoline leather. Says Eric. A rose Equir is a recent favorite. Um, a bandit is a gang leader. Says TK. Good point. Um, Phyllis says, great video, and I'm glad I have several of your picks. That's always a good thing as well, isn't it? Um, but here, I suppose, what separates this one from all the rest is, is the greenness, which is maybe why Madame Persolace finds it difficult to take this one. Um, it's just quite hissy and maybe violet leaf-like um, and really, really punchy. Um, and yeah, you don't mess with this one. You do not mess with this one. Um, Corpus Equus, somebody says, waiting for... Again, so sorry. I love that one. Uh, TK is saying... 
uh, that it was reminding us that it was reformulated in 2022. They had to make it less animalic. Yeah, I think they had to reformulate it pretty much almost as soon as it came out. But <clears throat> we are at the final one, folks. And I saved this one for the end, even though I could have included so many others, as I said. I saved this one for the end because this is just, this is just this is such a massive bomb. And I thought if I spray this first, I will not be able to smell anything else. But we had to include this. Rachel, thank you so much. That's really kind. Mr. Persillay's top 10 lists are the best. That's really kind. Any chance we will get a top 10 Narcissus fragrance? Ooh, that I would need to give some thought to because Narcissus isn't a note that kind of instantly springs to mind, but that might be an interesting challenge. Do send me ideas for top 10s, by the way. I always like getting ideas from you and they're, and they're genuinely helpful. They're very, very helpful. But this one, again, um, I, I don't wear this one very much because... It is absolutely the signature scent of a very, very close family member. And I think if I wore it, everybody would think that he's come into the room, which would be a little bit odd. But this had to be here because this is one of the best modern leathers from, from 2006, composed by Antoine Lee. It's Rien from Etat Libre d'Orange. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you can see you can see that I've worn it a bit, but not much. If you haven't smelt this, okay, I mean this is this is just genius perfumery. For the few of you who are not aware, the word rien in French means nothing. And the construction of this perfume is that it contains almost everything. And what Antoine Lee wanted to do was that he somehow wanted to try to balance all of perfumeries strongest materials. So you've got aldehydes in here, you've got patchouli, you've got leathers, you know, everything that is really, really huge um, is in here. And yet it works. TK says nothing and it has 80 ingredients. And so <laughs> it's just so good. And if you were to walk past somebody, they would smell you coming from like about, you know, 78 miles away. And the joke is that they say to you, what are you wearing? And you just say nothing. Whereas actually, in fact, you're probably wearing every single thing imaginable. Um, it's it's just so good. And yes, it's kind of like weirdly super aldehydic, really, really sour, really bitter, powerfully, powerfully leathery. It's like, it's like you know, it, it's like Kinesia 10 on steroids or Tuscan leather on steroids. Um, but despite it being so authoritative and partly aggressive, I would actually say this is the most ironic leather. It's the most intellectual leather, the most tongue-in-cheek leather. Because of the, because of what I explained just now about it, you know, being called nothing and yet having everything, because of the intellectual challenge, the kind of um, artisanal challenge that Antoine Lee set himself um, to, to try and balance all these heavy-hitting ingredients, it it's something that I think you you have to you have to have your brain and gear to really really appreciate this. And, and yet, if you chose to, you also could completely switch off your brain um, and, and just go with the, the sort of more carnal, more animalic aspects of your um, personality. So I know a lot of people prefer the intense version. I personally don't, even though I like it very much, because I think I think this has kind of, kind of got a purest, rougher quality to it that I like. The intense, weirdly, I think felt a bit smoother. Um, uh, Boogie Daddy says, I've wanted to try that one for the longest time, but also feel drawn to the incense version. Um, it, you, you, if you have never tried Rien, you absolutely need to. You're in for a treat. Um, Rien is what my husband has always worn, says Trina. There you go. Um, and Tracy says, what are your reflections on Rien incense? Uh, well, I just said, I prefer this one, even though the other one is, is pretty good too. So we haven't done too badly for time at all. We're not even at the 55 minute mark. Thank you very, very, very much indeed for watching. As I say, please do send ideas for top tens. Uh, thank you very much for all the comments. I will make sure to read the ones that I've missed. And even if you are watching the recording, please feel free to let me know what some of your favorite leather perfumes are. But, oh, hang on. M says, right before you went live, I was reading your interview with Mathilde Laurent of Cartier from 2015. Um, loved your writing and fascinating interview. Oh, that's very kind. I thought you were going to say something about leather, but thank you very much. That's fine. Great video. Do a patchouli next time, says TK. I'm pretty sure I have done a patchouli video. Now that one, I'm pretty sure I have done. 
Um, look up, uh, by the way, if you want to know what lists I've done, oh, Filippo, thank you very much. That's very kind. If you want to see what lists I've done on persalaze.com, uh, running across the top, you've got the menu. There is a lists menu. And I've included, I think, pretty much every single list, even though I actually spotted the other day that one of the lists is missing. I'll have to go and uh, add them. Top 10 animalic perfumes or musks, says Aria. Oh, now that would be a good one. Top 10 stinkers, right? Top 10 really, really filthy perfumes. That would be a good one. Let's end on that note. Um, stay tuned to social media for details of new videos coming your way. But until then, thank you so much for watching. Be good, and I will see you soon. Bye now.